seven million followers. Six hundred and seventy, right? Yeah, still a big comic. That's a pretty big one, but let's make a big comic. What's up? Little smaller. Let's see. 0.67 of 100 million. Would be so, so one point six. <laughs> So we have our ice, at least it will be ice in a few more minutes. And what else do we have in common? Well, meteor showers are left by comets. The trail they make, and they're a little bit of grit and sand and dust and sand. So we're going to use to represent that. Silicon. Whenever we have a meteor shower, that's because the Earth is actually passing through the tail of a comet that that comet leaves behind as it goes through our atmosphere. So we'll throw some silicon in there. And recently, a famous comet came through. What's the most famous comet that everyone knows about? Halley's Comet? Haven't heard of Halley's. I have heard of Halley's Comet, which is a direct note here. Yeah, that's a famous one. And most recently, when Halley's Comet came through, they took some close-up pictures. And they saw the coma, which is that nice evaporation trail that's left behind, and they saw some bright parts on the comet. They also saw some dark parts on the comet. And we think that that's probably cold. We could use diamonds, we decided to use charcoal instead of the budget <laughs> and building and all. <laughs> but coal. So we'll throw some coal in there, make a nice dirty snowball in the end. And also, something that you might not expect to find in comets just floating around up there in space. Windex. <laughs> no, of course not. Windex does not come from space, but there's something in Windex that we do find in comets. It's ammonia. It doesn't smell too good, and we'll have to know that. But ammonia is found in comets, along with some other uh, organic elements. When the Earth was first starting to form, <coughs> a lot of the water that we have here, originally had here, would have been very hot, the Earth was very hot, possibly would have evaporated off into space. But lots of comet impacts would have brought a lot of water back to Earth, as well as some of these organic compounds that you and me and everything else is considered living is made of. So a lot of material that you might have in your body right now, you know, one day, long ago, and floating around in space on a comet. And every time a comet comes through, gets close enough to the sun, it starts to sublimate, not evaporate. See, there's no pressure out in space. You might know this, you might not, but if you were boiling water down to the beach, having a barbecue or something like that, water boils <laughs> at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, or 100 degrees Celsius. If you take that exact same water up into the mountains, it doesn't boil at 212, it boils at a little bit less temperature. That's well, why you have to cook food for a longer temperature when you go higher up in the altitude. It's because of that pressure. The pressure holds that water together. Take that water out into space and it will boil at zero degrees. Water will go directly from the solid state, being frozen, to the gas state. We call that sublimation, skipping that middleman, skipping the uh, liquid phase. And we have something here on Earth that does the exact same thing, and now we're just going to throw in the protective gloves. Take a look. That's dry ice, of course. Nice big chunk. Carbon dioxide in solid form. Everyone in this room is making carbon dioxide right now, I hope. <laughs> Hopefully. But that's all it is. Sublimation. We're going from the solid to the gas phase. This is going to get a little gory. But do you know what happens when you go out in space without a space suit on? <laughs> your blood sublimates. Blood sublimates turns into a gas and will go right through your skin. Not a pretty picture. But it's not the freezing that you have to worry about. Some of them have to walk back from that. So we have our water, we have our sand, we have our charcoal, we have our ammonia, and now we're going to add that dry ice to freeze it all together. It's a process that usually takes millions of years out in space. So we're going to hold you all in here. We've locked the doors. <laughs> we can, of course, speed up the process, swirl it around. And then, of course, gravity does its job. Relays our gravity today. Wrenches the whole thing together. Multi comment. Sorry. We should have passed out rain coats. Yeah, rain coats for the first two rows. <laughs>
just like a Gallagher show, only funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and again, this process does take millions of years. Thank you for bearing with us here. And that's what a comet looks like. Of course. <laughs> comet that we can see from Earth would be, of course, much bigger than that. If that was floating around in the solar system, we would never be able to see it. You know, our best telescope. Comets are usually the size of a mountain. But every time a comet comes through our atmosphere, sorry, our solar system gets close enough to the sun, the sun's energy starts to sublimate some of that ice and some of that dirt, some of that charcoal gets left behind, becoming that comet tail, coma, that we all see in the pretty picture. And that stays there, I think, floating around in space, not exactly floating, orbiting the sun, different thing, but basically sitting out there. And as the Earth goes around the sun, we occasionally go through one of these comet tails, and that's when we get meteor showers. Nice when there's particularly more meteors than usual. You can see meteors any night than stars in the sky. But meteor showers, maybe you'll see two a minute. It's a good one. The way up the desert, maybe even a little bit more than that. You can see little bits of dirt and grit that fall off these columns. And then we've seen a shooting star, by the way. Familiar with those. The shooting stars that we see are usually smaller than a grain of sand. Very, very small little bits that fall off these columns. And they're so small that you would expect you can't see them. You're actually right. You're not looking at that little bit of dirt. What you're seeing is the atmosphere around that bit of dirt that's starting to glow. These little bits fall very quickly and compress the atmosphere. And that compression, of course, keeps it up. You take the gas and compress it, you get hotter gas. So the atmosphere around it gets hot enough, it's just like a hot piece of metal, it starts to glow, give off pretty colors, depending on what gas is passing through and what's falling off of the little bit as it burns up. Most meteorites, sorry. Most meteorites, of course, don't make it to Earth, but occasionally they do. The last one I heard about was last year when landed in Canada, rural Canada. I not heard anybody. But they occasionally do fall into land and are found. And when you think about most of the Earth's surface being covered with water, probably a lot of material falling into the Earth every day. About two tons of material actually falls to our planet every day. But we give some back to space. And here's pop of helium balloon, that helium floats up and up and up and up and out of our atmosphere. We give material to space and we get material from space. We're also surrounded by a large trash heap of all the satellites and space that we've left behind. Those could also fall to Earth and cause shooting stars, but most shooting stars are just little pieces of dirt. The minivan was floating out in space and fell into Earth. It would completely burn up before it got to 